Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, in the last video on this Class D amplifier, this 420 watt guy. Now again, 420 watts with 10% distortion. So I don't know about that. I think it's 330 watts with 0.5%. So that's that's a better number I think to go by. But anyway, we're not going to achieve that. All I want is a good solid 100 watts on each side. Okay. So, All right, guys, so in the last video, we used this 160 VA transformer, and we got about 123 watts out. And you know what was surprising is because of the efficiency and everything, we're only pulling about 159 watts in of real power. The VA power was 185 watts, and that was out of 160 VA rated transformer. That's why the voltage was dropping. We're pulling a little bit too much. So... Even if we could only get 100 watts, that would have been pretty cool. Now, what I want to do today is look at the input voltage, the output voltage, and the output current of this transformer to see what that looks like when you go from no load to the full load. Uh, that's what we call transformer regulation. Transformer regulation is where when there's no load on the output, the voltage is kind of just like, you know, it just kind of floats to the high point. Well, as soon as you start pulling current, the resistance of this wire that used to wind the primary and the secondary, the primary, let's say it was 120 volts. Well, it's not gonna be 120 volts because it's gonna lose some voltage there. So let's say it drops a few volts. Well, that turns ratio is now changed, right? And now on the secondary side, it's also dropping some voltage. So you're gonna lose some voltage there too. So what we wanna do is we're gonna use this AC power supply to hold voltage steady. We're gonna look at the input and the output to just see what it looks like so we can have kind of a, a study between a 160 VA and a 250 VA to see what the real power difference is, what the output power of an amplifier is in a single channel so we can just kind of isolate it to the transformer so we don't have a lot of things you know, playing into factors. So we can kind of isolate it right down to the transformer. So we're going to look at those waveforms around the transformer in this video to see, you know, what they really look like. 160 VA, 250 VA at max power. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Now, what I want to do is start off with we left off from our last video, so I'm not going to go over a lot of stuff that I did from the last video. So please watch that so you can see the setup and all that kind of stuff. I'll show you in this video maybe some, maybe I'll just really quickly go over the setup so you can, you know, remind yourself in this video. But what I want to do is I want to show you my board where we ended up last video, the power, and just talk about that for just a moment. And then let's jump into testing and see where we are. The 250 VA obviously should give us more power, but let's just see how much better it performs, okay? All right, so I'm back with my board, trying to hold it away from my circuit over here. Now, this was our, this was our transfer rating, 160 VA, two times 22 volts. The 250 VA that we have today is two times 25 volts. Now that's AC voltage, so when you go to square root of two, you get a little bit more voltage on the rails for that. Now this guy is 3.6 amps, the 250 is five amps. So, you know, it's significantly, you know, it's different than this 160, right? 250. So we should get, we should be able to get a lot more power out, okay? And this is what we did last time in the eight ohms, we got this. Okay, we got 123 watts, pretty amazing. Now the input power is 159 watts of real power. Now, uh, the VA was 185. That's the reactive power. So I go over things again and again, uh, just in a slightly different way, hopefully to help people understand all these concepts better. So bear with me if you already understand this. but. Imagine if we just ran the AC power into a capacitor, okay? Well, and just let's say the capacitor's ESR, equivalent series resistance, was very, very low. 
practically zero, let's just say. Well, it's going to take current, right? But it's not dissipating any power. So even though the power supply has to deliver current and voltage to the capacitor to you know, charge and discharge capacitor, AC capacitor, let's say, even though it's doing that, it's not dissipating any power. Okay, the wires, the ESR, sure. Minimal amounts of power, you know, okay. So what I'm trying to explain is that when you have a capacitor, or let's say an inductor for that matter, if you just hooked up a transformer without any capacitors on it, without any bridge rectifier, and you just turned it on, you're going to have current running through that inductance and it's going to pull current. But it's inductive and it's reactance, which means it's not dissipating power. It's pulling current, it's pulling power, but the current is 90 degrees out of phase with the voltage. And it's just storing the energy and then it's giving it back, storing and giving it back, right? Now, if you had both the capacitor and an inductor in a circuit, at some point, if you design them in such a way where their impedance, their reactance was the same value, at, let's say 60 hertz that's coming out of my you know, wall over here, well, then that's when you meet resonance. So the capacitive reactance equals the inductive reactance. They cancel because capacitive pulls the current before the voltage, 90 degrees before the voltage starts to come. Inductors are opposite. The voltage comes first. Finally, the current goes through the choke it's choked off finally it comes through and so it's 90 degrees behind the voltage when you put the two together and if the reactance is i don't know let's just say one ki kilo ohm at 60 hertz the capacitor is pulling the current 90 degrees before the voltage but the inductor wants to pull the current 90 degrees after the voltage well that's when you hit resonance and that's when you have what they call a tank circuit. The capacitor charges, feeds the inductor, and they go back and forth, and you got a resonance. It just goes, you know, it's just an oscillation, okay? All I'm trying to say is that I'm trying to point out that when you have capacitors and inductors, uh, ideal capacitors, ideal inductors, they don't dissipate power, but they do take power from the power supply. And that's where you think of the VA. So in this case, our circuit is pulling 185 watts. 95 of it is reactive power. It turns out to be capacitive. So the current is 90 degrees ahead, which we, we draw it in vector forms. We draw it minus 90 degrees because it's a minus phase angle. Um, in the last video we saw it, Try to remember what it was, 20, 30 degrees, and that's this angle right here between the VAR and the real power. So the whole thing is, is if you can, you know, think of this, is that the VAR is just reactive power. It's non-dissipative power. The 159 watts is going to our class D amp, and it's dissipating power. It's sending 123 watts to the load. And then the other 30, what, 6 watts is being dissipated inside the amplifier. But that's real power. We're really using that power. We've taken it, we've used it, we've dissipated it. Now, between 159 and 185, this 95 VAR, that stuff was just reactive. It was taking it, giving it back, taking it, giving it back. Okay? So... I just want to try to explain that a little bit more because I know, you know, talking to other engineers over the years that this is a concept, even though some people grasp it really quickly and understand it, some people struggle. And so I'll try to explain it different ways in different videos and let me know what you guys think, if that made sense, that explanation. But uh, so the whole point of this is when we go to 160 VA, and we're saying, okay, we got 159. Gosh, man, we this transformer did pretty good. 
we're able to pull almost as much real power as this guy was rating VA, even though we're actually pulling 185 VA. So we got an extra 25 VA out of this transformer. And I it didn't seem like it got hot fast. I didn't run it for a long time or anything like that, but it seemed totally fine. So, you know. All right, so go watch the other video for the explanation of all this other stuff. And by the way, this is 0.25% distortion for max power. I wrote 2.5. <laughs> I should have corrected that. But I left it there just to remind you from the last video. I, I, said, I saw it and I, I read it as I was looking at the board. But, you know, it was 0.25. When I edited the video, I'm like, oh, what the heck? 2.5? That's 0.25. Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't confusing. But, all right. So there we go, guys. So with the 250 VA transformer, this ripple that we have, um, if we're getting the same ripple, well, our voltage on a rail should stay up higher. Obviously, we're going to get more power out of this 250 VA. For one thing, the DC resistance of wire isn't going to drop as much voltage. So where this guy should have been 31 volts and we saw more like 25 volts on the, on the rails, RMS, and then, you know, this guy's dipping down below that even, right? So, uh, if it's 5.4, it's dropping about 2.7 volts or something below our RMS, maybe. Somewhere around there. I mean, it's... Anyway, so you, you get my idea. Or you get what I'm trying to say, right? So, uh, with the higher voltage and the lower DC resistance in the windings, we should be able to keep this voltage up higher where... We should be able to get a higher, I mean, the ratio between 250 and 160 versus this wattage and what we get, I think it's going to be larger. I think we're going to get, the, the ratio, we're going to get more power than what we would expect if we just took the ratio for between 250 and 160, okay? Just because less losses, less ripple, okay? All right, let's come over here and take the measurements and see what happens. Okay guys, we got it all set up. Now again, go look at the last video to fill in some of the things I'm not gonna cover here. But we've got the Redfish current probe over here. Uh, and it gives all the power measurements. So we've got 15 watts, 118.8 volts about, uh, 0.18 amps, 0.71 uh, power factor. And this is set up right now with one watt on the output. Okay, so we're gonna do the one watt and then the max power uh, before clipping okay so let's just go over the setup here I've got the 160 VA right here and then we'll follow up with the 250 over here so the AC power coming into the transformers right here and we're looking at it with this differential probe it's a mix sig differential probe I'll put a list of the equipment below the video in case you're interested uh, differential probe here looking at that voltage and then as the voltage comes into through the transformer and into the board, I'm looking at that voltage with this uh, scope probe right here, 10X, okay? And down here, you can see the input voltage coming in through here, and it's coming down into the connector right there. These two probes are going over to this meter, giving me the RMS measurement here. So I'm looking at the scope right here, plus the RMS with this meter. And then I'm also looking at the current coming in with the mix sig current probe and it's the current that's going into the board so we got the current and the voltage going into the board the voltage going into the transformer so we're going to be able to see input and outputs of the transformer then we're also going to look at the current um, going into the into the 8 ohm load okay the 200 watt non-inductive load and then I've also got my THD meter right here the Keithley and then I've got the, did I mention I've got the Pintech uh, differential probe looking at the output of the rectifier. So we got the AC input in the transformer, the AC output of the transformer going into the board, also the RMS through the meter, and then the scope is also looking at the voltage that comes out of the rectifier into the bulk capacitors. And then the Testo over here, it's looking at the output voltage. It's actually looking at the voltage over there by off of the THD meter. Okay, 
So, all right, I think we got everything here, and we're going to be using the unit T. Uh, right now, it's set at one kilohertz, 49 millivolts RMS input, which gives us one watt on the output. Okay, now let's go look at the scope. Now that you see all this stuff, I'll probably just read off this stuff while we're looking at the scope. Okay, okay. Guys, right now I just have the input voltage. It's about 118 volts RMS and about 327 volts peak to peak. Now let's turn on the output voltage. And you see how it kind of mirrors. So you kind of see it squares off a little bit more than the input voltage did. Uh, it looks a little bit more squarish on top. Okay. Not a lot, but a little bit. It's actually pretty close. And it's 24.2 volts RMS. So that's what's coming out of the transformer into the board. And the Amazon uh, 90DM600 is showing 24.4, 24.3. It's kind of bounced around. So it's pretty darn close to this one. Okay, now let's look at the input current. Okay, and there's a current, 426 milliamps. And you can see that, uh, you know, that waveform that we're familiar with with bridge rectifiers, there's no current flowing until the voltage exceeds the capacitor, then it charges up the cap, so we get that kind of flattening out, and you see the current rise, and if I put my cursors, here I'll spread it out to make it even more obvious, I guess. Get that close. Shoot. There we go. So you can see how this coincides with those uh, corners. So that's our current. Even though it's 490 milliamps, it's 500 milliamps per division. So you can see it's one, two. I mean, what I should do is get the peak to peak on there, right? Okay, look at that. Two point, uh, about 2.2 amps peak to peak. So that's uh, that's just because of the re bridge rectifier, right? And this is only one watt output, but we are putting about 15 watts in because there's some headroom just to run uh, the amplifier and then there's some efficiency, but most of that power is just to run the amplifier. I'll turn, on the I'll turn off the signal right now. Okay, so I turn off the output. So we're just seeing uh, we're just charging up the caps, keeping them charged up, running the amp fire, and it's about 14 watts, okay? So you can see when I add that one watt to the output, it jumps up to about 15 watts. Okay, so there you go. There's about 15 watts. I'll turn off the output, and you can see it drops about a watt. And you can kind of see it increase here too. So, yeah, it, the amp fire is very efficient, but it does run, it does look like for both channels even though we're only putting a signal through one channel both channels are running so about 14 watts all right guys so now let's look at the output voltage off the bridge rectifier so the reference is down here and you can see it's 63 well almost 63 volts up here that's across from the plus and minus rail so half of that's about it's so it's about 31 volts per rail which is supposed to be and we got about two volts peak to peak ripple you can't really see it we could see it if I AC coupled it and then place it in the middle of the screen and then I'll increase the amplitude and it looks pretty gnarly pretty dirty but it's 100 millivolts you know it's just not very much ripple right now and it's two volts peak to peak, and that's probably picking up these high frequency peaks. Uh, a lot of switchy noise at the input, I guess. Uh, let's see if I can put, see if I put the low pass filter on it, 30 kilohertz, look how clean it is. So I'll increase the size of that a little bit more. So that's just switchy noise at the input, but we don't really see it on the output signal. The output signal looks really clean. Now we could put some ceramic or poly caps at the input to clean that up, but it's you know just high frequency noise at the input right now, no filtering. So that's 
really not too bad that the scope can actually filter that out with the small capacitors it has built inside. So there you go. That's what the Ripple looks like right now. It's charging. You can see it charge the screen, discharge during this dead time, charge during this pulse, so on, right? Get a few more cycles so you can see it. All right, so that's we pretty much got a picture of what the input looks like at one watt and also the output. I'm looking at that with the Hantec current probe and I'm seeing about 355 milliamps at the output. All right, so just pointing out one more time with the filter on, uh, we're only getting about 200 millivolts peak to peak ripple and we're getting about 55 millivolts of RMS ripple. And this is the GWN stick with the Hantec current probe and here I crease the amplitude of that but that's the output current and it's about 357 milliamps okay looks pretty clean not too bad the THD by the way is showing 0 0.13 and so the THD with you know plus noise so it's counting all the harmonics and all the noise in between harmonics that might not be hard Harmonics of our one kilohertz signal might be noise generated from the switcher. It's 0 0.13 Okay That's just sitting right over there So we got 0 0.13 probably can't see it from there <laughs> See THE with noise Okay guys, so now here we are at max power. I've got 150 watts at the input 118 volts, 1.5 amps, 0.85 power factor. So trying to match the input voltage of the last one. And okay, there's 177 VA. Change it on the meter over here. And there's, okay, showing 24.5 degrees phase shift and it's leading. And, and we have about 94 uh, VAR from the meter. All right, and from here you can see we have about 118 volts RMS and 319 volts peak peak. So that's same as the last input to the transformer, I think. So let's do that. You can see how it's kind of squared off a little bit more. If I put that on the square parts and pull up the current, you should be able to see that. Now, right now it says 23, about 23 volts RMS going in. Okay, and here's the current. So the current, there you go. See how it, I hit it just about right on at the square. There we go, just can fine tune it here. Okay, and so that's, yeah, that's where the square wave is, right where the current pulses up. Now the current pulses up, look at that, 13 amps uh, peak to peak, 13.8 amps, almost 14 amps, and it's 3.7 amps RMS. That's on our input. So you can see what, you know, how crummy that current looks right that's a bridge rectifier for you let's look at the output now that's the ripple i still have it on ripple so and you can see a little the high frequency stuff going on besides the low frequency uh, charge discharge so yeah we should put some filter caps on the input that'll help that uh, 1.2 volts rms and 3.9 volts peak to peak now let's go back to dc coupled and we should be able to see some, here I'm gonna bring the, whoops, I turned it off I think. Okay, I'm gonna bring it down here. And then I'm also going to change the level to what, 10 volts? There we go, 10 volts per de decade. And now you can see the ripple because we're pulling some decent amount of current. All right guys, that's what it looks like. That's input power. Output power looks pretty clean. Here, let's go up to that. And it will, I'm sorry, uh, right now it's 53.46 volts. All right, let's go up and look at the output on the GW. Okay, if you can read that, 3.66 amps RMS. It looks pretty clean, our output. 10.6 uh, amps, peak to peak. Okay, let's look at the THD. THD 
it's up to 4.49. Yeah, it's about 0.45 THD plus N. Just show you, plus N. So, yeah, that doesn't look too bad though. All right, guys, I just turned it off, but you can, and I'm putting the thermal probe on the resistive load, and look how hot that thing got. You know, might not seem like a lot of power, but that's a 200 watt resistive load and went up to 128C. Well, it looks like 130 maybe. Well, like I said, I just turned off power, so it's starting to cool off, but wow, that got pretty hot, don't you think? <laughs> there it is there. So I just uh, tore the tape up by putting this probe on it. Okay, so now I have the 250 VA transformer in. See the size difference to 160 and 250? So I tried not to disturb the setup. I only moved things as little as I could to wire in the, uh, the transformer. I wrapped it the same wires on the same terminals, the same color coding as the previous transformer. So, I think we're all ready to go. All right, so here we are with one watt on the output. And you can see we have about 119 volts, 327 volts peak to peak. Okay, that's going to enter the transformer. Let's see what's coming out of the transformer. Okay, there's the voltage coming out of the transformer. 27.5 volts you know it fluctuates a little bit but yeah you can see it's uh, it's already looking a little bit higher voltage a little better okay let's turn on the current there's the current okay and now we're we are at half an amp per division and we're one two almost three divisions so you can see it's about you know well right here about two point four amps peak to peak you know approximately 500 milliamps rms so that's our input current and our voltage on both sides of the transformer okay let's turn on the output and you know no ripple because it's only one watt but yeah so it's zero volts peak to peak 71.4 volts so we are getting more voltage out now yeah we're getting about nine volts more out on the output that's great just go up and look at our output current it's showing about 359 milliamps rms and about one amp peak to peak and our thd it looks like 0 0.14 and it bounced around under under four and then above four so about uh 0.14 i i could set some averaging on that but i'm just kind of let it race around and see if there's any big peaks by the way, this is where the test is plugged in for the voltage reading. Alright guys, it took 660 millivolts at the input to get full output. And with that, we're getting 118 volts input, 317 volts, that's the input. Here's the output of the transformer. We're getting almost 26 volts now, 25.9. That's awesome. Let's look at the current. Okay, there's the current. And look at that, 5 amps. 18 amps peak to peak. That's kind of crazy, right? But 5 amps RMS, that's pretty cool. And the output voltage. Okay, we're getting 61.4 volts. That's great. 5.4 volts peak to peak ripple. So, that's looking good. Okay, let's go up and look at the scope. All right. Uh, Maybe you can see 4.67 amps RMS, 13.4 amps peak to peak. Sine wave looks nice. All right, so now let's just go over to the uh, THG meter. All right, and it's saying 0 0.48. It's kind of bouncing around a little bit lower, and but maybe a little bit higher, but 0 0.48 seems like uh, where it's kind of in the middle. Okay, guys, from the app, you can see about 227 watts. 117.8 uh, volts in, 2.26 amps, 0.85 power factor. The VA is 266. The VAR is 138. And we have phase shift to 23.6 degrees. All right, just a quick summary of what we saw. I, I drew this graph, powered this way. Now the little 160 VA transformer gave us 159 watts out, pretty cool. 
the 250 gave us 228 watts out that's pretty great because I want to get 100 watts per channel so it looks like we can do it uh, now this is also an 8 ohms just a note there okay so what I did is I sh uh, I showed our graph from before the 97 VAR you know the reactive power and 159 watts so we're the transformer is actually putting out 150 VA or you know that's what it looked like at the input power now at the bigger transformer it looked like 267 VA and so this reactive power is just stuff we can't use so that's why we don't like you know that's why we like a good power factor like a high power factor number bringing closer to one meaning this VAR shrinks so this VA this angle goes up towards the real power so that's why we do power factor correction in a lot of circuits uh, so that we can fully utilize the transformers or the input power that we're bringing in that we're not just bringing a lot of power that we can't use so here's um, a quick note on the transfer 160 VA it puts out 22 volts RMS and the 3.6 amps RMS and the 250 VA put out 25 volts uh, or is at least it's specified for that at 115 volts in and uh, 5 amps out so it looks like you know we did a pretty good job on the low power the 1 watt it didn't really change too much uh, transformers putting out about 24 volts RMS out so a little bit higher because my voltage was at 118 in not 115 so it was a little bit higher the voltage at the rectifier uh, you can double these numbers that's what I was reading over you know during the test but I divided by two so each voltage rail was about 31 volts which is about what you're supposed to get and that's after the voltage drop so we got a little higher here but still got 31 because we get the voltage drop from two diodes then at max power that voltage dropped down at about 22.87 from 24 and the DC voltage dropped down about 27 volts so we're losing you know some voltage so the 250 VA transformer gave us about 27 volts RMS out and about 36 volts per rail and then at max power uh, it was it dropped down about 26 but it still gave us 31 volts at each rail so which is you know what this guy was doing and this is a max power so that's why we could go higher power because uh, we didn't lose this you know four volts okay so hope that makes sense it looks like a pretty good test and it looks like the 250 VA is gonna work now from some of that noise on the input uh, I think I'm gonna add some you know poly caps to filter off that high frequency from the uh, class D amp going back out into the power okay so do a little filtering there hey guys so what do you think of that that's, I think that's pretty interesting right I mean it's very important to kind of get a good feel of how these transformers perform because they're expensive and you know when you're trying to select a transformer there's not an infinite number of voltage rails and VAs that you can choose from. There's certain VAs, and within each one of those groups of VAs, there's certain voltage rails you have. And you're like, well, that voltage is going to give me too much. That one's going to be too little. Oh, but hey, hold on. If Once it's loaded down, it's going to drop down to here. So it gives you, I think this was a good test to kind of help select your transformer. I hope you guys felt that was useful let me know what you guys think and also that redfish um, multimeter that's hanging down there I'm gonna do a review on that but uh, maybe I should do a review coupled with this amplifier project I'm working on I, I need to get this thing done but that redfish uh, power meter I'm way impressed with that I want to ask redfish if I can get a discount buy one or if they'll let me keep this one, I'll pay them for it. Give me a discount. It's a used one, right? It's a, it's a loaner, so I'd take it. 
<laughs> you know, I I've looked around. There's another. There's a couple other meters that I was. Uh, there's a Testo one. The Testo one's physically pretty large. I like to actually compare it to this and see how they work. But the fact you get an application for free, and you know you get the bag, you get. Anyway, I'll do the review on it, but I'm super impressed with this thing. Pretty cool. But, all right, guys, let me know what you think of this amplifier. I, I think we're going to go ahead and do, use this 250 VA. I think it's going to be plenty good for what I want to do. Next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through uh, some THD stuff at different frequencies. I'm going to do a Bode plot. I'm going to... I'm going to kind of exercise it and see how well it performs over the bandwidth and over the power band okay and you know we'll do some other I don't know we'll look at that actually that's probably plenty for a video so we'll look at the body plot the THD in the next video okay all right guys hey thanks for watching hey thanks for the patrons I got a couple more patrons over the holidays that was awesome I I'm always really surprised when I get a patreon it's it's awesome i think it's just amazing and so i really appreciate you guys and i appreciate all you guys watching the videos and also your comments uh thanks for your comments it's cool hearing from people all around the world i think that's one of the most rewarding things about this you know this youtube thing for me uh i want to help people learn electronics and i just think it's super cool that i can you know reach people you know, from Scandinavia to Eastern Europe to Europe and India, you know, Middle East. Uh, you know, it's kind of surprising. I don't know if I get a lot of people from Australia. I think I've got a, a couple, but yeah, I, I I don't know. There's some Australian guys that are maybe busy watching. Maybe that's why. But I thought, yeah, anyway, I was kind of surprised by that. I get a lot of Germans, Canadians, and Americans. Those are the top three. <laughs> so come on, Coach. Finland, where the heck are you? Yeah, you know, my ancestors are from Finland. My grandpa was. So come on, guys. Let me know where you're there. Uh, I do have at least one. <laughs> I appreciate you. Uh, and let me know if I can use your name on, on the videos, and I'll give you shout-outs, okay? I think it's pretty cool. I think it's cool for other other people. I think uh, would be happy to hear from people around the world too. So let me know if I I can use your name on a video and give you a shout out, and I will. All right. Okay. Thanks, guys. Hey, we'll see you next time, and we're gonna exercise this a little bit more, and we're gonna consider adding some better capacitors to it. Maybe I got some really cool capacitors. And that might be actually a cool way to do a review on some really neat capacitors I got. So, all right, we'll see you next time. Okay, thanks for watching. The VA power is on. The VA power is what? Fuck me. On the output of a trans of a power. Well, the output of the power is to. Uh, now let's just go over that. Just again, you know kind of beating a dead horse so I'm going to go over things before the current starts to come well one is pulling the current 90 degrees ahead and one's pulling the, degree, the current 90 degrees below well that redfish uh, current 